spirit of the living God, <laughs> we thank you for being here. <clears throat> spirit of the living God, we thank you for being here. We thank you for making your presence known. We thank you, Father, for walking up and down these aisles. We thank you, Father, for making your presence known in this place. For when you show up, the ground becomes holy. So God, we bow before our holy God on today. As the angels cry out, holy, holy, holy. God, we bow before you. We really don't need the angels to bow for us, God, because we can bow all by ourselves. You are holy. You are the true and the living God. Besides you, there is none other. You reign and reign and supreme reign. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the lily of the valley. You are the bright and the morning star. You are the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected. God, you are the great I am. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Ha! Oh, God, we bless you on the day. We pray, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus that our worship comes before you as a sweet perfume. We thank you, God. We thank you. God, camp out for a while. Just that, just dwell here. Just dwell here. So, God, we thank you for the word that's going to come forth with boldness, with clarity, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic forces. We thank you, Heavenly Father, right now that, Holy Spirit, you're rescuing the hearts and the minds of your people. Prepare ye the way so that the seeds of your word, God, will fall on good ground good ground and will produce at the appointed time. God, we ask you to rise and the enemy be scattered. So, Father, we thank you right now. I decrease, you increase. I ask for the anointing that breaks every yoke and breaks every chain. We release the anointing that heals, delivers, and sets free. Father, we're going to give your name the, the honor. We're going to give your name the glory, and we're going to give your name all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. As we are standing all over the building, our, 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 pat, our uh, scripture for today is on the screens. If you have your Bible, that's even better. Amen. Because we are a Bible teaching church, we don't just take for granted that uh, 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 technology is always going to uh, uh, work in our favor. So in order for us just to, you know, not give the enemy any highway or any leeway, we're just going to have believe God for the logos of the word, the word of God, the written word. Amen. And the scripture we got on the screen, we're coming out of the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. We're, I'm sorry, no, let me go back, let me go back, go back, go back. Hold on one second. See, I told y'all. Didn't I tell you? Rolled up, wrong scripture, guys. Give me a minute. Let me get y'all there. We're in chap Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 29, and we're going through 34. Mark chapter 1, starting at verse 29, going through the 34th verse. 
Um, we're coming out of the message version on today. Why? Because I got to go, I, I got to go straight to the word. Amen. We thank God for the message version, all the various versions, but we're going, getting ready to take flight. We're coming out of the book of Mark, chapter 1, starting at verse 29 for your reading. We're coming out of the message version, and we ask, if you will, let's all read the word of God together. Let's go. Directly on leaving the meeting place, they came to Simon and Andrew's house, accompanied by James and John. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed, burning up with fever. They told Jesus, pause, go back. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed, burning up with fever. They told Jesus. He went to her, took her hand, and raised her up. No sooner had the fever left than she was up fixing dinner for them. That evening, after the sun was down, they brought sick and evil afflicted people to him. The whole city lined up at his door. He cured their sick bodies and tormented spirits because the demons knew his true identity. He didn't let them say a word. We're coming out of the title of our series, Jesus, the man, the work, and the message. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing king. Amen. Amen. Praise team, we thank God for you ushering us into the presence of the Lord. We just thank God. We pray God's rest restoration upon you and you continue to be faithful in your giftings. Amen. For the last couple of weeks, we have been talking or uh, working with the passage of the book of Mark. Mark is uh, the second book of the synoptic gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are called the synoptic gospels because they in turn often uh, 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 share the same stories. The, the difference with between all four synoptic gospels is the fact that all of them were there, but each writings of the each of the book of writings Matthew Mark Luke and John all wrote from the perspective from being in the presence of Jesus I love the synoptic gospels because again it to the best of their ability they each wrote the book out of uh, from their personality that who they are and helped us to see who Jesus really is and what he came to do. It's more or less like, say, for example, you were at a, 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 an accident or on a scene of a crime or whatever, <clears throat> and you know that the first thing they do is they begin to interview eyewitnesses, right? Right? Now, all of us could have been at the same accident, but each of us will have seen something different. When we report it, based upon uh, 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 our, our background, our history, our, our, our things that uh, we pay close attention to, when we tell the story, it's going to come from the perspective of who you are. For example, it's not a big secret that pastor loves kids. So again, if you got kids, God bless you. Bring them on to the city because a church with no kids is a church with no future. So I want them all, all enough so we can build another building for them. Amen. That was my commercial break. But anyway, 
So if I showed up at the scene because I love kids and have a passion for them, I'm, when I show up at the scene, if any kids are there, my, I'm immediately going to hone in on the babies, right? So when you talk to me, I'm going to be telling you about the kids that was there and if any of them was hurt, and y'all got the message. So anyway, so the book of Mark, the book of Mark himself, when Mark writes, I like Mark and I also like Luke. Well, let me explain to you why. When Mark writes in his, uh, 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 in his book, the gospel itself, when he writes, Mark doesn't cut, he, he, don't go, he goes straight to the works. When, when, because Mark was writing to an audience that did not know or was not able to be uh, present when Jesus was there. So when Mark begins to write, he's writing to let you know, look, he's the Messiah, and I'm going to just give you straight proof. I ain't got time for the word part. I got to show you action. That's where Mark writes. Now, if you flip on over to Luke, Luke himself is a physician. He is a, a doctor, per se, right? But so when Luke writes in his gospel, Luke is detailed in his writing. Luke also is very detailed when it comes to the illnesses, the sicknesses, and all of those things as Jesus is personified, I mean, I'm sorry, spotlighted on as being the healer, right? So Luke, the physician, Mark, he is the detail. Luke starts from the beginning when he was birthed with Mary and Joseph, y'all, the book of Luke, y'all know it starts at the beginning. Mark himself kicks it off when he goes straight into Jesus in the ministry. Jesus been tempted, okay, boom, he's kicked off into his ministry. For the last couple of weeks, again, like I said, we've been focusing on Jesus, the man, the work, and the message. Last week, I, I, I highlighted a word out of the uh, passage of, of, that we were working with about when Jesus himself taught in the synagogue as one who was, who had authority. And when I looked at that word authority, okay, I looked at that word authority, that word is um, exusiva in Greek, and it means the power to act to the extent that you are guided by faith, delegated empowerment. So you, in turn, authority. So when the scripture, when it said Jesus himself, he spoke, he taught, he, he, he was, the way he acted, exhibited it, that he had all authority. Now, I can't hang out back there, but I just want to just let you know this. How did Jesus get all authority? Well, he was there in the beginning. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit was there at the beginning of creation. And it was when mankind fell, recap, mankind fell, then God himself needed to redeem mankind back to himself. Because I don't know if you know it or not, but you are God's most prized creation. He has made you a little lower than the angels. You, you, you. You are made in the image of your father. You are spirit, soul, and body. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So therefore, you yourself are God's prized creation. That's why the enemy don't like you. Because you look just like your daddy. He don't like God, and he definitely don't like what God loves. Because, see, every time you walk, every, time, every place you go, you resemble the fact of God's love, the truth of God's love. Not fact, it's the truth that God loves you because you were made in the likeness and the image of your father. So, so amen, it is a compliment. So, therefore, let me, let, can we just get the elephant out the room and let you know that the enemy himself, he is... He is the uh, uh, over this world, he, but you are in the world, but you're not of this world. 
If you have accepted Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross, you are now saved. You have been redeemed, brought back with a price. So therefore, if he, the authority that was given to him by way of the cross is now also yours. But see, but see, this is the problem right here. We don't know our benefits. We don't know the authority that has been given to us. So that's why the enemy can can just run raw shot and just cause chaos in your house because you don't know who you are in Christ. But Jesus himself, he he when he shows up on the scene in the in, in the synagogue. He, did, he, he was the word. It was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. That's why when he rolled up in the church, he rolled up with all power and authority because he knew who he was and he understood the mission. So here we got Jesus. Last week, a couple weeks ago, y'all remember? He rolled up in there. The enemy himself was in the church. The, 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 the man with, that had the unclean spirit, it wasn't the man, it was the unclean spirit, right? Because we know here that people that are born again, under, unsaved, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, all that other good stuff, that you cannot be possessed demonically. However... You can, come on, Lauren, help me out today, baby. You can, however, be under the influence. How is that, Pastor? You can be under the influence because the enemy don't like you. He's out to torture you. He's out to torment you. He wants your testimony. He wants to see you slip up. He wants to see you fail. That's why when Jesus rolled up in the church, and there in the church, he put, he basically told the spirit to hush and to come out. Why did he tell him to hush? Because again, remember, I told you that Joker wants to get the crowd focused on him. He wants all the attention. He wants the worship. So therefore, what does he do? He upsets. Get, get, gets everybody upset, making noise, acting crazy, so that they can then begin to focus on the spirit and not Jesus. The, the, the spirits recognize who Jesus is as well. That's why he told them to hush. And they had to obey. So if Jesus, your redeemer, Jesus, the one who has brought you back with the price, Jesus, the one who has all power in his hand, if he can silence the enemy and and all his imps have to obey, why, why, why? Why do you allow the enemy to whisper in your ear? Why do you allow the enemy to take residence up in your mind? See, see, back then, Jesus was on the scene. Now, fast forward today, Jesus is in us by way of the Holy Spirit. But I love Mark because Mark is letting you know. He's giving you, the, he's giving you the detail of what the work that Jesus did. And I think I read somewhere he says, yeah, I, he did this, but greater works shall you do? Because remember, Jesus was, is 100% man, but he's also 100% God. He is the, the second of the triune Godhead, Jesus. But he came by way of Mary. He came by way of humanity so that he, in turn, will be able to relate to God's creation. The man, the work, the message. Here in the passage today, we, this, this is after Jesus left the synagogue. He left the synagogue and he went on to the uh, 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 Simon and Andrew's house. They are his disciples. James and John was with them. Simon and, and Andrew brothers went with James and John. When they got there, 
Okay, when they got there, we're talking about the authority. Jesus showed us a couple weeks ago that he has authority over unclean spirits. Now he shows up at Simon's house. And he, when he gets there, I love it. He gets there. Simon's mother was sick in bed, burning up with fever. Now, can I just speak to the mamas in the house? Y'all already know. We ain't even got to take no thermometer or whatever. We put our baby up close to us or whatever. We already know they got a fever. And, and, and when it comes to that, we also know that we, we, we can just watch how they behave before we even know they got a fever. Because when you have a fever, that lets you know that your body is trying to fight off an infection. There's something going on somewhere. A couple weeks ago, Lauren was teething. She had a fever, right? Her mama knew that. Then sometimes it can be the ears. Y'all know how it goes. But here is a situation, a straight set up for Jesus to show up and again demonstrate that he has been given all power and authority. Sometimes you just got to show people. You remember back in the day we used to say, you just got to be about it. You ain't got time to be talking all the time. Just show up. Just do what you know to do. I don't know about you, but I talk. Mm, you can talk all day. But how many of y'all need some action? How many of y'all want to see it done, right? So Jesus shows up at the house. I love it because she, my mama's over there in the bed burning up with a fever. But look at what happened. What did they do? They told Jesus. I just need to ask a question. I just got to ask a question. Have any of you ever called on Jesus? When, 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 when hell is breaking loose in your house, do you call or do you just tell Jesus? What about when the bank account is looking funny? You broke already before the next payday, before the 6 o'clock hour on the first hit. Do you tell Jesus? Or, or, or do you think you're able to handle all this by yourself? The disciples, they ain't even know him like that, but they had just left the church over in the synagogue. And I'm like, if, if I had to be a fly on the wall, I'm like, well, if Jesus uh, shush that, uh, that little spirit, right? Well, surely, well, what's a fever? We're going to tell Jesus. We, back, in, back in South Carolina, we used to sing this song. Y'all might know, I, I must tell Jesus all of my struggles, all my troubles. Tru okay, all right. All right, that's a South Carolina thing. That's okay. I must tell Jesus. Somebody used to say, just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. I don't know about you, but you, I, I read in my Bible that he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Y'all entertaining trouble too much. I double dog dare you to just call Jesus. They told Jesus something about that name. It's the name that's above all names. He says, he says, he went. They told Jesus. And Jesus went to her. Well, first of all, I got to get my first point right here before, before I just move on. Before when they told Jesus, right? The first point, the first truth I want you to take away today is the fact that Jesus has all power and authority, period. You got to leave here with that truth, and you've got to get it in your spirit, man, that Jesus has all power and authority. You got the whole synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to exhibit the fact that the God, through his son Jesus, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's just settle that in the room. Jesus has all power and authority. I ain't say some power. I ain't say the power that's limited. I say all power and authority. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, 1 Peter 3 and 22, if you just needed a backup to the backup, it says Jesus has the last word 
on everything and everyone. Who dropped the mic, right? He had, and, and look, it says from angels to armies. He's standing right alongside God and what he says go. I told y'all I had to go straight to message. I ain't want to play with New Living today. I went straight to message. What he say goes. Now, I don't know about you, Robin, but when I hear that, that just gives me a little bit more, more, more flex. Because I know, I know who my redeemer is, and I know that I'm in this world, but I ain't by myself in this world. And knowing the fact that he has all power and authority, there's nothing that I can't go through that he can't handle. I don't, hey, I, I just walk a little different myself, knowing I'm a child of the most high God. No. Nothing can come nigh my dwelling unless he allows. And if he allows it, that means he's trying to mature me, grow me, or work something out of me. Because he has all power and authority. That's why you have to tell Jesus. Why well, I got to have Jesus in my business? Because he has all power and authority. And let me just say this. He loves you just enough to not allow you to stay that way. 1 Peter 3 and 22. Jesus has all power. That's why they told Jesus. The next thing happened. That's, I love it because Jesus himself, at the time when they told him, Jesus, he went into action. He went where Peter's mother was. Y'all know y'all be put isolating and putting people in the room and stuff like you, especially after that COVID thing. We get in isolation. They you you in there you're in your room, you're sick. But I love it because Jesus was not afraid to go where she was. Amen, Lauren. He was not afraid to go where she was. Now, y'all know now, since, since COVID done came through here and put fear in everybody, we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we ain't going, wait a minute. I got my gloves, I got my PPP, I, I got, you know. But then there's Jesus. He went where she was. If Jesus can go where sickness has put up the barrier that will prevent others to go. Where you at, it ain't no big thing with, for Jesus. He ain't scared. He'll come right where you are. I think I read in the word that he says, if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, you're there. There's nowhere that I can find myself that your love can't reach. But because he has all power and authority over demons, he also has all power and authority over sickness. Can I go a little further? That's including mental illness. If it's got a ness after it, Jesus has been given all power and authority. See, that's why the people of God need to take their rightful place so we can go around and start cleaning up some stuff and stop letting the enemy just run rock shot like he all that in a bag of chips. When we know he's defeated, we read the end of the book. But if you don't know, if you don't know your, you don't know your, uh, your benefits. You'll think that's the norm. You'll think that's the way it's supposed to be. You'll get comfortable in that when God has called you to be victorious. Stop settling for mess. God wants the best. He, he says, above all things, I wish that you will prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Stop walking beneath your calling. Ugh. 
Jesus had all power and authority. All power. But he wasn't afraid to go where Peter's mother was. He wasn't afraid to walk in the room. I don't care how dirty and nasty it, the situation is. I dare you to tell Jesus. All he needs is an invitation. All he needs is for somebody to call on him. He said, if you call on me, I'll answer. <laughs> Have you called Jesus? No, when was the last time you called him? All power and authority, Jesus. Number two, he says, the truth number two comes with the fact of he's able to touch us because he's one of us. Well, what, Pastor, what you mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because Hebrews 4, 20, 4 and 15 says, we don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality. That's why he came. He was born the way he was. He could have swooped in here on the heavenly host of angels and turned everything upside down and, and fixed it all. But because he came by way just like we did, he can be touched by what we're going through. He says he's been through weakness. Anybody weak in the building? He's been through testing. Has anybody been tested lately? He experienced it all, all but sin. He's a holy God, all but sin. He says, so let's walk right up to him and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy and accept the help. I told you we in straight message Bible today. Hebrews 4 and 11, another version says, we do not have a high priest that cannot be touched. That stuff which you're going through, what that stuff that you are dealing with, you really don't have to deal with it. If you do, God is going to help you because he can relate. Y'all know how we are when we get into conversations and stuff, Maisha. We don't want to talk to nobody that can't relate. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I need somebody, you know, and when you find out y'all got the same story, oh, you right, oh, yes, that's right. right. You can feel me, right? Well, what do you think about Jesus? Well, he's our, he wants to be the first resort, not the last resort, not when you done tried everything else and then going to leave him as last. He's got all power and authority. I don't know about you, but I want to be with someone that got the juice. I want to be connected to someone that when he speaks, everything trembles. Right. I want to be connected to him. And then not only do I want to just be connected to him, when I understand he feels me. So if I'm struggling, he know about that too. If I'm crying, if my heart's broken, he know about that too. If, he, if the enemy is trying to tempt me or attack me, he know about that too. He went through 40 days of it. He's able to touch us. He's able to touch us. That's why we go to him, because he's able to touch us. But see, because we in this microwave society, when he don't come when you want him, you think he ain't heard you. Oh, and I did say he ain't heard. I apologize. I am. I do know how to speak proper grammar. But, yeah, he ain't heard you. Wow. But anyway. <laughs> but you think that he's not heard you because we come to the table, Daniqua, with a preconceived notion of how God should respond. That's why y'all jacked up. Because, again, you got it already in your mind what it should look like when it shows up. But then when it shows up, you don't. Thank you. You don't recognize it. Why? Because in your little mind, you done figured out, oh, it should look like this. And if it don't look like this, well, God ain't real. God ain't real. He don't, I don't believe that church stuff. 
the devil is a liar. Because I read he has all power and authority. And I also heard somewhere he might, I know that was a song we used to sing, he may not come when you want him. He's an on-time God. So look, but, but, okay, well, pastor, well, what am I supposed to be doing while I'm waiting on him? I already hear it. I hear it. I hear it. What am I supposed to be doing in the wait? I'm so glad you asked because if you're waiting, while you're waiting, you should be blessing, praising him because now, you, but, well, I, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. But you can't praise and bless and be in um, expectation if you ain't got faith. Yeah, that's it. You, I, I'm sorry, I just need to talk to the faith walkers in here. If you got faith, you already know he coming. You, if you got faith, you, you might not have been there when Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John wrote it, but because of the word, the word says, you, 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 blessed is the one that believe and ain't seen. Do I got some believers in the house? See, 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 I can't really talk to you if you ain't got no faith. The Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. But if you over there on the fence with your face, sometimes you believe, sometimes you don't. Then it depends on what the word, what, what it feel good to you. I ain't talking to you today. Because I, I got to get you to believe without seeing. That's faith. And truth be told, he's given us all a measure. We came with a measure. It's his, he don't want us to stay at a measure. That's why you go through things. To increase your, mm. we, we, you go through some stuff, it's the trying of your faith. Yeah. Tests and trials come to make you strong. Yeah. See, you, he, he does no longer want you on the milk of the word. He wants to bring you to the meat, but he can't bring you to the meat. It's his intent for you to grow in him. Know about him, not know of him, but know about him. Love what he loves. Hate what he hates. Not the people, but the sick. Mm, my God, where my church at today? Hallelujah. We serve a holy God. And besides him, there is none other. Ain't no compromising in him. Ain't no gray in him. It is what it is. I don't know about you, I hate shady people. I don't know. Ooh, yeah, oh. Ooh. Um, I don't hate. I put scratch that from the record. I don't hate. But I don't like people when they on the fence. If you gonna come at me, come at me direct. Cause see, you tossing to and fro with every wind and doctrine. I don't know what I'm gonna believe or what I'm but one thing I do know is that God is a man that he shouldn't lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, it will come to pass. That's why I trust him. That's why I love him. Because he is a God that can't lie. I can take him to the bank. If he said it, I can go to sleep at night because I know he got it. I dare you to put your trust in Jesus. Oh, my God, I dare you to put your trust in him. He won't disappoint. Stop it. She's going to make me run in here. That the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. Now, I, I got to get ready to close because I know we got to go. But he says, he says right here, he gets up, he shows up in, 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 in uh, Peter's mother-in-law room. He shows up in there. And he ain't got, he, he ooh, Jesus, help us. He didn't have time, Naima. He ain't want to know how long the fever been there. How, what's your symptoms, you know? <laughs> She's there. She's sick. They told him it's a fever. He went. Took about a hand. 
He took her by the hand and he raised her up. Y'all ever heard that about the human touch? You know, y'all, y'all, y'all know when babies first come in the womb and then they want that, they, 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 they put them to the skin, the skin, that touch, right? Right? Why? Because it does. The, the human touch. He, he, he's 100% human, but he's 100% divinity. He's 100% can deal in the natural, but he's also in the spiritual. And when the spiritual shows up with the natural, that's when you got supernatural. Woo! And, 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 and he said, he said, he said, one version say he rebuked that spirit, that fever. And then he took her by the hand and raised her up. Check this out. And no sooner had the fever left. Check this. When God does it, he does it suddenly. Yeah. He ain't got to call no conference call. He ain't got to get Zoom people on Zoom. He ain't got to talk about it. He is a being about it, God. Amen. He said as soon as he showed up, he took her by the hand and raised her up. He spoke to the fever, told the fever to chill. He's got the all Power and authority, not over demons, but also sickness. Also the fever. Now get this, get this. Why did he touch her and raise her up? <laughs> he, took, he took her by the hand and raised her up. Because they, what you say, Daniqua? Come on up out of that. I like that. Come on up out of that. C C Peter's mama, mother-in-law, come here. I, 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 because I'm sovereign and because I have been given all power and authority, I'm able to raise you up out of. And let me let me raise you up out of that and change your position. God wants to raise you up and shift your position, but you over there still nursing that sickness. Stop paying. Speak to it. Tell it to get behind you and be about your father's business. That's what, that's what Peter's mother-in-law did after she had been touched by the master's hand. After she had been touched, it, she ain't even, look, she got up. After he restored her and placed her, somebody say he, he pulled me up out of the muck in the mire and placed me on a rock to stand. And because he did that, I can run on. See, check this. God, get, look, after she had had an encounter with Jesus. Oh, I'm finna, y'all just gonna run now. After she been touched by the master, after she been healed by the divine power of the almighty God, she didn't go sit back down, Derek. <laughs> Naima, it say no sooner had the fever left. That means soon, quick, fast, than yesterday. Left, gone, bye-bye, never to return. She was up. Fixing dinner for them. Another version says she went to serve. Yeah. Yeah. See, I got to ask. If I ain't got that many servants, I got to ask, have you been touched? Yeah. She didn't have time to get accolades because she had been made whole. Mm. Look, so, because see, sin... Oh, I'm finna go there. Sin will deplete you. Sin will wear your behind out. Sin will have you weak. Sin will have you energyless. Sin will destroy you. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of mm, God is eternal life. Hallelujah. So she, no sooner, the sickness had to go. And she was, then she went being about her father's business. I, I just need about five of y'all just to have an encounter with Jesus so you can begin 
to serve. Serve? Serve? Some of us, after we done got healed and stuff, we'll be getting ready to head out to the near Walmart, Target. Uh, She was up. She left her position. She was made whole. Fever gone. And everything that's attached to the fever left. All, all that lethargicness and all that uh, 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 lethargic and weak and hope. Uh, when he shows up, he coming after it all. He ain't leaving nothing behind. That's why I don't nobody want Jesus in their business. Because you and en you en enjoying it. Because you, you, you already know. They say the demons knew who he was. That's why he told them to shut up. Because it wasn't time yet. He wanted them to see who he was without being influenced by an unclean spirit. See, 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 God, see, look, when you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, ain't nobody got to tell you nothing. <laughs> you, at this point, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. If he did it before, he'll do it again. The same God back then is the same God right now. Oh, I got to go ahead on. We got to go home. That's why I said that point, that truth number three, you can take this home with you. He is able. To not just heal, but to also restore. If your marriage jacked up, I double dog dare you to call Jesus because he's able to heal and restore. He can make, he can, he'll make your latter days. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's able. He, he, not only is he willing, but he's able to heal. But I like it because he ain't going to win. When he heal it, he ain't going to leave it. He going to do a new thing. It ain't going to be like it was. You can't be touched by Jesus and still be the same. I don't care who you are. That's if you've been touched by Jesus. Some of us being touched, but it ain't by Jesus. That joke is a counterfeited liar. And you are a defeated foe. Isaiah 61 and 1 says, well, Pastor, how you know he able to heal and restore? Well, I read over in Isaiah 61 and 1, it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be free. That's the word. That was... The work. That was his message. The spirit of the Lord. Y'all remember overshadow? <laughs> you will be Mary. You're going you gonna to give birth. You're going to conceive by way of the Holy Spirit. But then you're going to be overshadowed by the power of the Most High. Well, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed to do this. Listen. Because of Jesus... You wondering why you can't sleep at night? You wondering why there's a, there's a, there's a shifting in, the, in your innermost being? That's because, that's because that which is in you is the greater one. He going to work things out. He going to heal, deliver, and restore. And then he's going to restore you to your rightful place so then you can go serve. He's able to heal and restore. That's why. That's why. You got it. All he did was on the cross, when he got ready, when he took those whips and, and, and was beat. That's why we celebrate the resurrection. I don't call it Easter. I call it the resurrection day. Why? Because that was the day that he got up. Death didn't defeat him, and the hell couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't keep him. That's the resurrection. So if he's able, Lord, Holy Spirit, please let him get this. The same power.
power. The same power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. You got it. I don't care what it looked like or feel like. You got it. Why? Because of what was done on the cross. You just got to have faith to believe it and start walking in it. You have to apply the word of God to your life. That word was written for you. The B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. We don't need the Bible in heaven. We need the Bible here. But, God, but, but, but on the cross, he said he went there so you didn't have to. He did it. Old Testament, they was, you know, sacrificing animals. The animals had to be unblemished, right? To even be brought back in, in right fellowship with the Father, right? Because sin separates man from God. He's a holy God. Sin does that. It isolates you and gets you out there by yourself so the enemy can wreak havoc on you. But because of the, the, the Holy Lamb of God, Jesus, Jesus, the Holy Lamb, the one that taketh away the sins of the world, when he hung, he hung on that cross, because truth be told, you should have been dead. The wages of sin is death. You should have been dead a long time ago. Because truth be told, if it was measured by the law, we done broke about five before you even got to the church this morning. So we just go to death. But see, at that time, it, the priest, it was the priest that could only go within the holies of holies to make intercession and to offer the sacrifice on your behalf. That's why now we have a high priest, Jesus, that can be touched by what we got going on. And so what he did, y'all ain't got to offer up these little birds and these animals and calves and all that anymore because the lamb of God has paved the way. Now walk ye in it. An ultimate price has been paid for you can be so you can be free. He endured it. Truth be told, none of us could have. But I tell you what, it's an insult to him when we walk beneath what the price that he's already paid. It's an insult to him. When we hold on to offenses, that's saying, Jesus, what you did, that forgiveness up there on the cross, can't handle it. Can't, I, I got it. That's why we preach and teach the gospel. Why? So now, what are you going to do about it? You came today, you've learned that Jesus has all power and authority. Not just the power, but the authority. And the second thing you learn that he's able to come where you are. He ain't scared. Amen. He ain't scared. I don't care. You got an issue, hurt, habit, or hang up. Jesus ain't scared. You struggling. He ain't scared of that either. He already know. Because he done watched that which has transformed all the way down your bloodline. He waiting on you under the hearing and the teaching of the word of God to step out on faith and believe. And believe. Because faith without works is dead. So if you've gotten the truth of God's word, you know that he's able to heal and restore. How are you going to walk different next week? Or the next month? Or the rest of the year? The word of God has been given to the people of God. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because at this time, he says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you, well, if you open up and welcome me in, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. That's, that's if you've not been to, He loves you. Good, bad, ugly. He loves you. He's not about the guilt. He's not about the shame. He loves you. And then not just that, now might, might not, salvation might not be yours. But then you may have found yourself in a backslidden state. 
Now let me talk to the backsliders in the house, right? When you acknowledge that you're a backslider, right, through the truth of God's word, the preaching and teaching of the gospel, you acknowledge where you are and you turn from that and you turn to him. Because sin is good to the flesh, it ain't going to give up willingly. But you got to be able to rely, call, tell Jesus. That's where we get it mixed up. We miss that step. Tell Jesus. He can relate. He understands where you are. Call to him. And, and, and because he's got all power. You, all you got to do is say Jesus. It's in Jesus' name. Not Mohammed, not Buddha, not none of them little statues and all that right there, but Jesus. Jesus. So if, you've rep- if you have, are a backslider, that means you keep going back. You, you slide back. You backslide. You walk away from the truth and you go back to what feels good to your flesh. Listen, he, in his word, he says he's married to the backslider. So that means nothing you say, do, when you been, what happened to you, what didn't happen to you can scare Jesus because he knows already. He's just waiting on you to come unto him. All ye that are burdened and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. If you ain't resting, you ain't been to Jesus. But the good thing about it, Jesus came for us. No matter what state we find ourselves in, he came for us. And his blood is better than tide. It don't just get it don't just get the stain out. It removes it. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. He cleanses us up, takes us up out of that mess and that foolishness. And we thought he was having fun and a good time. And then he cleans us up and he says, Behold, I'm gonna do a new thing. Watch me do it. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind got to be renewed. Why? Because you were born into sin. But how do I get my mind renewed, Pastor? By, by studying the word of God and getting to know Jesus. Not know of him, but know him. He says, behold. <laughs> he says, greater love hath no man than this, than to lay down his life for a friend. Amen. And then the third call, listen, if you out here in these streets in Watertown and you are not connected to a ministry where you can learn and grow with the word of God, listen, playtime's over. I don't know if you've been watching the signs, but he on his way back. You were created to be an eternal being. Where you live, spend eternity, it's on you. You're going to heaven or hell. But not just that, the Bible says that we, uh, until we all come into the unity of the faith, it's strength in numbers. You need to be around other body of believers. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves with other believers. That's how you get strong. That's how you grow. So if you're looking for a church home and you want a pastor that's going to oversee your soul, I'm going to love on you. I ain't going to get all caught up in your emotions and all this other stuff. Your feelings, I'm concerned about your soul. That's my, that's my job, right? So if, you, if you're looking for a pastor, I want to be your pastor. If you're interested in joining this ministry, then again, y'all see jazz. Can you turn that up for a minute? I want y'all to just hear this. I ain't going to belabor the time. But I want you, did the Lord drop this song in my spirit this morning. In Jesus' name. Now listen.
Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you have, been, have given us a name that is above all names. Father, we thank you that it is in your name that demons tremble. It is in your name that we're healed, delivered, and set free. It is in your name. It is in your name, oh God. It is in your name. So Jesus, we thank you right now. We repent for all that we've said, done, thought, went, that was unpleasing in you. God, we had, you already know because there's nothing that or nowhere we can find ourselves that you're not already there. So God, there's nothing that is hidden from you. God, you see and you know all. So right now, God, on behalf of, oh God, on behalf of all of us that are under the sound of your weak voice, Father, forgive us. Forgive us. Father, you said if we ask, if we, we confess our faults, we are, we are flawed human beings, Father, but we thank you that Jesus paid it all. So we then now can be in right standing in you through Christ Jesus. God, we thank you that you don't look at us the same, but you look at us through the blood of Jesus. And by that, that way, we have been made righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So, God, we thank you right now. We pray for everyone that is under the sound of my weak voice. Father, you know all, you see all. So, Holy Spirit, I ask for anything that I am not able to articulate that you reach it up to heaven in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that when we leave here today, we're not the same. We're not going to be the same. We're going to choose to do the right thing, God, in Jesus' name. We're going to choose to be your hands and feet in this earth, Father, in Jesus' name. We're going to be like Peter's mother-in-law, God, that once we've been in encountered with you, that we're going to get up and we're going to serve, God, because, because you have served us. God, we thank you right now. God, we pray for every broken heart and every wounded person that's under the sound of my weak voice. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for the broken hearted. Father, we pray right now for those that are dealing in, with, with chaos in their minds. Hallelujah, God. Let that mind be in them which is also in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for being who, who, who we can call on, for never leaving us nor forsaking us, for being an on-time God, for being there for us. God, we love you today, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you're doing in us, to us, and through us. God, we thank you. We love you. Thank you for restoring. Thank you for refreshing us. Thank you for pouring your forgiving love over us. <laughs> the enemy wants to, to burden us with guilt and condemnation. But God, your word says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You've dealt with it. So now that we, so we can go free. Father, we love you. We praise you, honor you, and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. <laughs>